you guys. Arrogance is ridiculous and I am not exaggerating. Now look, this is mine. He is 55k BP. I'll go over my gear quickly. I At the moment, it's not the most optimal set. I've given him a set of Elite Fighter for 30% crit damage. I've given him a set of Night Terror because this is the best sets that I have currently. Ideally, you would probably want to put him on the new set for 40% crit damage perhaps, but otherwise Night Terror isn't a bad set, especially when you have 100% crit rate. Now I have built him with attack bonus piece, a crit damage piece, and a crit chance piece. This was pretty standard before the gear patch. Now that the patch has come out, I think ideally you'd want to aim for attack, attack, crit damage, and you would want to make up the excess in crit chance in the subs on your new weapons that you can now get crit chance as you see here. So it should be a lot easier to hit 100% crit chance without committing to a 60% crit chance slot. And I should really swap this out in future for a attack percent main instead. So that's what I would recommend on gear. My skill ups on him, I am one away from max. It's unfortunately on his ultimate. So that would affect his damage quite a lot. I have no awakenings as of yet. His awakenings are fantastic as I've covered in previous videos. So with, with that out of the way, you can see my stats, you can see my gear. Now let me show you the results I've had with him so far. I've been using him quite a lot since Friday, just yesterday. Have a look at Nightmare 2 and you can see my team. I have Wrath, Salavik, Salazar, Volker, Arrogance as my primary DPS. The rest is kind of just because I don't have, at the time I didn't have much else to use. But you can see that Arrogance is actually punching really close to Salazar. And this was actually before I gave him two skill ups in his ultimate. With the last skill up in his ultimate, he might be able to overtake Salazar, which is crazy. This is Salazar's game. He is really good at single target damage. Arrogance is built to do pretty much everything. He's a jack of all trades. He's good in melee, at range, at AoE. He can hit airborne units. Salazar is just there to absolutely obliterate the ones in front of him. Arrogance can do a lot. So being this close to my Salazar, the Salazar with a higher BP and with max skills is impressive in itself. But then let me show you something else. Now I'm going to alter a gear raid one. I will just let it play out. This isn't the most optimized placements. I did this just because I just pulled Vierna, luckily. I'm going to make a video on her, but I need a bit of time to get her to max and to have some time to get used to her. But just watch this. I'll speed it up and then I'll show you the damage results afterwards. And you'll probably be quite surprised as I was. Notice how Zealus goes down first and Vienna. And then Arrogance goes down after 20% of the enemies have already died. So that is my GR1 Gear Raid 1 18 team currently. As Vienna gets stronger, this is going to get a lot faster. It's built around Vierna, Captain Reeve, Zealus, and Nero for the Lord skill for the Curse team. I just realized, oh, actually Arrogance does AoE damage. I should give him a chance. I'll place him alongside them and see how that works out. Well, this is how it works out. He beats Zealus, like quite handedly. 35% of the damage done versus 26. Third unit placed. 13 enemies already dead when Arrogance goes down. And he beats Zealus. Again, Zealus is not max skilled. He is not max promoted, but I mean, come on. <laughs> Arrogance is not meant to beat Zealous in Gear Raid 1. What on earth is going on? I was shocked by this. I went to check just to see how well Vierna was doing. And by the way, very early tidbit of information. She's doing pretty great. She's 5 star. She's. I just gave her some quick gear. Her gear isn't even all 16. It's not even all ideal. I don't think she even has a set bonus. So Vierna is going to be great when she's built up. But Arrogance doing this much damage on an AoE level is quite shocking to me. He's definitely not in his native territory, and yet he doesn't care. He's just absolutely slaughtering. So Arrogance is... You'll be able to use him everywhere if you get him. You can use him in Gear Raid 2 for sure, Gear Raid 1 for sure. And you can even use him in Gear Raid 3, because I've used him in the campaign, and he is just obliterating aerial units. Mine is critting for 120k with his ranged attack. So he's flattening air units as well. So from that quick bit... Arrogance is great. I definitely recommend him. Definitely focus on building him if you get him. And um, I've been progressing in the last... Well, I'm now on the final mission in Expert on the, on the campaign. And I've been finding myself taking Salazar, my pride and joy, taking him out of the 16 and putting Arrogance in just because he has more utility. Arrogance so far has been amazing. Pulling Arrogance was also the final piece I needed to be able to complete Artifact Fragment Raid 18 on Auto. I'll show you that quickly so you can see how I use him. I put him here so that he can cover for Lavania as well as hurt the boss. And you can see here he out DPS his Salazar quite handily. He did get placed a bit earlier, but just massive progress having Arrogance in the group. 
I will show him off a little bit in aerial arena. Now bear in mind, my aerial units are not great. So, and I'm also punching down a bit, but you just see how well he performs versus the other units I have. One hundred and seventy K. So yep, my aerial team still sucks. You can see obviously Lisa is better. She's built for AoE aerial. She also does bonus damage to aerial units. And yeah, arrogance is still very relevant even after being placed after her. Definitely can't discount arrogance. The guy is strong in even airborne arena. The guy has use everywhere. So that shows you arrogance in a number of different scenarios, a different raids. You see he is either top or second top for me. Obviously, I don't have the biggest roster ever, but he is definitely viable in so many places. If you can build him, build him. His awakening abilities as well are also very potent. I mean, the first one is utility to stay alive, which is good, but he's there for damage. And the other ones all increase his ability to deal damage. Two through five are very big awakenings. So congratulations if you managed to get those. In terms of gear, you'll probably want the fracture set for the 40% crit damage, and you don't want to stack too much much crit damage because you want to have a balance of attack and crit damage so if you are way over stacked in crit damage you may not want the elite fighter you might want elite marksman for attack speed he does have a passive that on attack percentage chance to proc another attack or a bonus combo or to hit another target so scaling of attack speed isn't the worst on him and generally just increases your damage output so yeah he's viable in a hell of a lot of ways definitely give him some of your best gear on him i would recommend unless you really think it's better on someone else from what I have seen, he hits very hard. From looking at his base stats comparatively, he has less base HP than his other Nightmare colleagues. He has more defense, which I don't know if that's particularly relevant. His base attack is also lower than Salavik and Salazar, but that's okay. It's He still does plenty of damage. His modifiers are very high. The uptime on his ult is high. It lasts a long duration. His rage regen auto is also slightly higher than his uh, colleagues. Overall, for my review, I would definitely say he is one of the top units at the moment. From what I have seen, what I have tried, it'll be interesting to see going forward where he falls into some of the late game player guild boss teams. Most likely, he won't have as much of a place. I think Setram is going to completely dominate guild boss. However, I think Arrogance will have a place in just about every other piece of content. And if you are not absolutely late game, then even and even maybe if you are, I still think Arrogance will be prominent in a lot of guild boss teams. I don't really know of anywhere where I would say not to use him. Unless you have an absolutely stacked team where you have the perfect lineup, I I think arrogance will fall into almost every single team you have he's just viable and relevant in pretty much everything in the game at the moment so congratulations if you've pulled him if you're still trying to pull him good luck you still have a day so best of luck to you and i'll see you soon take care bye bye